Okay. All right. Hello, everyone. Can you still hear me? Am I still there? Yes. Yep. Okay, cool. I lost all of you as soon as I started sharing. So I mean, uh, recording. Okay, so um, I am so glad everyone is here today and to not really see you, but kind of see you. Uh, I am glad that I got to see some of you um, last month um, and sad that I didn't see others. So, um, but I think it was a good conference. And um, although the interest meeting was cut like a little bit short because everybody, how dare they, they wanted to eat first. Um, so, um, but I think it was okay. Um, <clears throat> I guess, so in the light of our, my agenda item of conference wrap up, um, I didn't send out like a summary of what we talked about um, because I slightly black out when I'm the speaker. So I kind of forgot some of it, but I believe that some of what we talked about um, <clears throat> was we talked about um, things in 310. So Pines is on 310, like on our production server. So um, people were asking if I found it to be faster um, than, than when it was in Dojo, um, to which I don't really think so, um, unfortunately. But, um, and then we also talked about something else. Um, are any of you there? Let's see, who, who was also in the, in the meeting? I'm sorry, in the ACK meeting that can assist me. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was there, Tiffany. I remember talking about colors. Oh, thank you, thank you, yes. So um, uh, there's a bug that Stephanie Leary from Equinox opened about looking at, or no, I don't, I don't think Stephanie opened it. Someone else opened it. Was it you as Elizabeth that opened yeah, it? Was, Thank you. Okay, sorry. So Elizabeth opened it, sorry. Correct attribution. Um, about looking at the accessibility of the colors um, that we have on the purchase order for um, the line item colors, like they're not the most accessible. So I think Stephanie commented on it because um, she's like our, you know, the community's accessibility expert. So, um, <coughs> um, so hopefully that will get some attention. I know Stephanie has been looking at um, accessibility on purchase orders because I saw a couple of bugs go by just this week. Um, I think about maybe like keyboard navigation um, in purchase orders, but I, I couldn't swear to it. Um, but yeah, so it's definitely getting some attention on the purchase orders, accessibility on purchase orders is. So, that's good. Um, was there anything else that anybody can remind me or was that kind of it? If it is, I, I will I will move along. Okay, I will take silence for as as indication that there is no other. All right, so um, you should be seeing my screen, hopefully. Please let me know if you don't. Um, so here in this big blank spot here is supposed to be um, our ACK bugs that I normally do. Um, and we should have a fair number of them because um, I was supposed to present at the March meeting, um, but then I think I was sick then. So we canceled that meeting and then April was the conference. And so now here we are. So we should have a fair number of them, except that I didn't do it. Um, <laughs> so I did the agenda, I think yesterday. And then today I've been, um, running around on like mom duty. So I don't have any. Um, so what I'll do after this meeting is I will fill in my normal like list of them and then I'll just send it out to the list. So like if you um, if you just wanna like see the list of them so you can look at it yourself, if there are any that like pique your interest. So I'll send that out to the list once I actually do it. Um, are there any bugs that anybody like knows literally off the top of your head that you wanted to bring up? just to like put that out there. Okay, cool. All right, well, there we go. I will I will take silence as uh, also moving forward. Okay, so the oh, next wait. thing, yes, go, go. The other where uh, Jennifer commented uh, two things in the chat, uh, one oh, about the you. keyboard bug and then asking if it is worth waiting until next week to do it once Feedback Fest is done. Thank you for pinging me about the chat. I forgot to open it. Like it's craziness on my second screen. So thank you. Um, yeah, 
I can do that. I can wait until next week and then just send out like the list. So that would be everything, um, everything from February forward. So it should be a pretty like decent sized yeah. list. Thank you. Thank you for the link, by the way, Jennifer, and thank you for stopping me. Elizabeth. <laughs> I appreciate it. I will just roll I, right on through. Yeah. I was just thinking there's likely to be quite a few changes by the end of this week. Yeah. With the state of bugs. Yeah. No, that's good. I can do that. Um, let me make myself a note. Otherwise, I'll forget. Um, oh, God. I'm knocking things off. Okay. Um, all right. So do bug links next week. Okie dokie. Cool. That's a good idea. Thank you. Next week. Okay. All right. Is there anything else before I steamroll forward? Okay. All right. And I have the chat open now, so hopefully I won't totally space on it again. <laughs> okay. Um, the other, the only other, where did I go? The only other thing that I had for today is um, I was going to do a presentation at the March meeting on the patron request work that I've done so far. And basically, I just want your feedback. So like it's not all the way done, um, like it's not ready to go into anything yet, but it's like done enough. So where I have some questions because I'm because I'm just doing this myself. Like there's no specs, there's no anything. So I want to know if what I have done is actually like okay with the community, or if like there's something that should be done better, or uh, if you guys like there's something essential that is not done yet. Um, so basically, I'm going to show you what I have so far, and then I have some questions for you guys. And if you don't want to like call it out or whatever you can email me later but like I really value your input and it would be great to not just like Tiffany thought it should be this way so this is how it is um so I'm going to show you what I've got so far and then maybe I can ask my questions if that's cool or and then you guys can ask me questions please obviously so okay um I'm going to log out just for kicks so I am on my test server um which I took off from bug squish squashing for y'all's benefit for today. So, okay. And I'm just admin because I'm, because I am. Okay. So the first, um, like actually new change feature that I put in is that I put in a library setting about whether uh, patron requests should be enabled at all. So like right now, we just have in the in the list here, we just have page requests, which takes us to the dojo page. Um, I didn't take that out because I'm just testing right now. So, but um, if we go to local administration, um, library settings, and so now there's this new library setting, enable page requests, and I'm gonna enable it just for cons, update, back out just in case okay so now you can see now there's this patron request new so basically like once the the new work supersedes the dojo you know you wouldn't see patron requests at all um, unless you have that library setting set to true and so it's if the library setting is affirmatively set to true if it's just unset or false you wouldn't see it at all um, <laughs> and my thought behind that is that I'm hoping this leans more towards that it's friendlier for circulating circ, circ, circ to get in there and use like patron comes up to the desk and I'm the circ person and they want to put it in a patron request so but we may not want all of our libraries to be using it like um, all of our acquisitions libraries may not want to use that so that was the thought behind having a library setting. So, um, so let's go into the new interface. Okay, so this is the new interface. Let's see what else is there. Oh, just kidding. There's still more. There's still more administration stuff. All right, the other administration thing 
and then we will come back here, is under administration, acquisitions administration, cancel reasons. I'm sorry, there was a child screaming. It's cool. Um, so we have our, our cancel reasons that used to be here, but I've renamed it order cancel reasons, which I am open to renaming. And then there's this new tab called request cancel reasons. So, um, <laughs> so there is a bug, um, and I have it linked somewhere, where it's basically like a request that patron requests should have their own set of cancel reasons. They shouldn't just use the same ones as line items because those aren't necessarily accurate. Like, you know, like uh, we have a cancel reason for like wrong provider. Like that, that's not pertinent to uh, patron requests. So, um, so this patron request now has its own set of cancel reasons um, and you can make one. So um, I'll just say uh, vendor canceled. Vendor canceled. And I'll do it with cons. Oh, I already had one. <laughs> okay, so it exists there. So now later on when we get into the interface, the drop down list, thank you, Jennifer, the cancel bug in the chat. Um, so now later on when we get down into the actual interface and we go to cancel something, it will use these cancel reasons. It won't use, you know, these over here. It won't use invalid ISBN or whatever. Um, the other um, thing, and I don't think I've done it on this test server, so it's just if you guys think this is a good idea, I don't believe that the view request and create request permissions, I don't think those are in the circulators permission group. I think they're specifically for ACK. So um, I see you, Elizabeth, hang on one second. Um, so my thought, because I because my idea is that this would sort of span both CERC and ACK, is that it should go into the circulators group. So I am open to whether you guys wanted to do that, like or broadly, you know, like in master, or if that would just be something like what Pines would do. So, <laughs> sorry. Um, okay, so Elizabeth said in chat, would this be where you could put like cancel ILL request? Yes, yeah, you could do that. So like, <clears throat> if, you, if you have, um, uh, if you have a patron request and then you want to, cancel it because you're just going to put it in as ILL, then yes, you could just change, you could have a cancel reason of canceled for ILL request or whatever. So you can put whatever you want there. Um, the ones I thought of, um, and I'm going to come back to this later in feedback, um, so hopefully be thinking of it, is what are some other good like generic cancel reasons that you can think of? So like the ones I thought of were like canceled by the vendor, like uh, we're canceling this whole request because the vendor told me it's canceled forever or whatever. Um, so I'm definitely open to some other ones. Already own, yeah, that's why I was like, maybe like the person requested it, but um, we didn't place the order through ACK because, you know, like we already own it or whatever. Yeah, thank you. Um, is there a permission specific for creating the request cancel reasons? I think. Uh, okay, so I wrote down, I started some like documentation. So this is what I've said so far. The administration of request cancel reasons, which is add, edit, and delete, they're controlled by the existing admin act cancel cause permission. So it's the same um, term as what we have now. Um, let's see. So Jennifer says we potentially want our libraries to be create their own request cancel reasons, but not create order cancel reasons. Interesting. Okay. So Tiffany, since the order cancel reasons are tied to EDI, mm -hmm. we don't want anybody who doesn't understand what's going on with EDI to touch those because they can break it for the whole consortium. Are they? Have you had? Um, we don't let There's, the, oh, the oh, only ahead, consortium sorry. staff, only consortium staff has the ability to touch those right now in our consortium. Um, I could be wrong. So please like check after me, but I think like hard coded, there's only like a couple that 
EDI actually uses. Is that, do you know if that's right? I know the list came from something to do with EDI initially. Okay. Like the list is like an, a, the existing cancel reasons for orders is like an official EDI used out there in the world by more than libraries cancel reasons because they had to strip out ones that really made no sense for us yeah um, there were some really weird ones back in the beginning okay um so I think what I could do is like because of what I'm also doing is I'm also putting in like my notes here things that are like essential like this should not go into master without this and things that are like I could do as like a follow-up bug you know mm -hmm. what I mean so would that be acceptable as like a follow-up bug or would that be like a showstopper no, it would definitely not be a showstopper for us because we could set up consortial request cancel reasons and then down the line allow libraries to do their own when the permissions were more specific. Okay, so I'm going to make a note. Um, probably would want these to be separated out into two perms. Okay, cool. All right, so comment. Okay, got that. Thank you all. Um, okay, let's see. So, what's he saying? Oh, so about the um, having, let's see, we have one work library using patron requests, and so we'd want CERC staff to be able to create. Okay, thank you. That's what I was going to ask. So, is there like general consensus maybe that it would be okay to give the view request and create request? to circulators that that would be okay and or desirable i think so since turning on requests is now controlled per library so even if the circulators have the permissions to do it they can't actually do anything with it if their library hasn't enabled um patron requests period mm -hmm. okay um let's see elizabeth says for spark um yes but maybe not to our lowest circ staff but like the supervisors um and i am not familiar at all with like using the you know like in the perms there's like the overarching like acquisitions like perm level and then we have like the lower ones i'm not familiar at all with like what's in the you know, quote unquote circulators, but I just wanted to make sure that that's desired, you know, like that CERC should be able to at whatever, you know, whatever level that they should be able to create and view requests. And I think, <laughs> I think we'd also want to make sure in the release notes, it notes that existing um, installations may want to add those permissions to circulation staff mm, okay. because I know like when we upgrade that wouldn't affect us because we have a very very different perm structure so we'd have to manually add those okay awesome thank you because I have not even thought about release notes yet and thinking about all the things that would be added so thank you <laughs> and just it looks really cool so far okay thank you I know you've all only right. shown us the admin stuff but it looks really cool so far. Thank you. Okay, so Elizabeth said, I'd love to be able to allow patrons to create them, but that's pie in the sky. So that would be my next, like after this would actually be it, that would be the next thing that I would like to do, um, unless there's like really like important follow-up bugs, but um, because like Pines does a like patron satisfaction survey every year, and that's always like really high on the list of people, what people want to see is to be able to do patron requests. So like what I would want to do would be <clears throat> if for the patrons home library, patron requests is enabled, then there would be something in the OPAC, like in their account where they could request something. And it would be kind of like the patron like version of, you know, our request button over here. So um, that would be like, and there is a bug for that, but that would be kind of like my next like larger 
thing, but I don't, I don't really know anything about coding the OPAC, so I would have to lean on somebody else. But Taryn's really good at it, so I'd probably just lean on Taryn. Can I? Um, yes. Could the so if, if it's currently a library setting for uh, turning it on, could it be two two perm two two uh, library settings where you could have staff mediated and or patron mediated, like one or the other or both? Yes. Just not so it's not okay. Because no, I know no, that our, that makes perfect sense. I, I like okay. that. Um, let me write it down. Okay, so go. So for OPAC, it should be two different firms of whether uh, request should be enabled, enabled at all, and then whether patrons can request via the OPAC. Okay, cool. All right, I wrote that down. Thank you. Okay, um, so anything else about that stuff so far? Can you uh, refresh my memory about the workflow with this in relation to acquisitions? Seems to me my my experience in testing had been that um, you could tie a um, a request to a selection list or creating a PO. But my problem is our libraries don't manually create POs; they upload, and I'm still looking for a way to connect a request to an uploaded line item. Yes. And that is actually the reason that I even started working on this at all, because it was totally, I don't wanna say useless, but like we couldn't use it because that's exactly what we do. Like we don't, we don't, you know, like hard create <clears throat> in Evergreen, we upload, you know, from the vendor or whatever. So this, we couldn't use this. So that's actually why I started working on it. So let's go back over here. All right, so here we have the grid, um, which, looks relatively similar to every other grid. Um, it, I know there is a bug and I know, I think it's Jennifer's bug um, about if making it customizable to whether it's like uh, filtered either by their home library or the pickup library. But I'm not gonna tackle that one for right now, just because, <laughs> not just because, but um, because I'm not sure like if there would be permission stuff um, related to that. And so I have to sort of wrap my brain around it. And I just want to make sure the whole thing works in the first place. So, um, but I have my eye on that too, um, because I know that's a blocker for um, the co-op. Well, and um, I think just having, an, I just, I think just having the ancestor and descendants issue or the options may resolve some of that for us. Okay. Okay, cool. Um, I have to test, but maybe. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm pretty sure right now it's not actually filtering like it should be. Like, I don't think BR4 is in the same like tier. Like you shouldn't really be able to see that, I don't think. Um, so, you know, it's still a work in progress, but that's what it's supposed to do. Um, so we have this show cancel requests that already existed. Um, it is sticky. <clears throat> so if you want it to always show canceled requests, you can, or you can have it toggled off. That works. Um, so let's create one real quick, and then we'll go from there. So this is the creation screen. Um, and so it's similar to, I think, placing a hold where you can just do a search for the patron from in here. So like if I know their last name or whatever, I can just search Jones. Or if they're standing in front of me and I have, you know, their card, I can just scan in their card and pull them up. Um, but let's just go with Jones real quick. Um, we'll wait, team chat. Uh, let's see. So let's pick whoever this is. Um, so this is what it looks like right now. It's not my favorite. I think it looks kind of ugly, but like it does the thing. So I've left it be for right now. Um, it shows the person's name, their barcode, and their home library. And then we can choose if we want them to, whether they want the whole place, phone number. Um, the pickup library right now just defaults to my workstation. So I'm BR1 right now. Um, I don't remember from the Dojo interface, so it may already do this, but request type is required now and title is required now. Um, so like new title, whatever. The rest of these fields are not required because it's so many different kinds of things that you could have. Um, 
you could probably like locally, it'd probably be really easy, like for your installation, if you always want to require um, author, it would be really easy to change that. Um, and then the other info. So let's see, Elizabeth said, can it pull in the default hold settings in the patron account? It does not right now. And I was looking at um, the place hold right now uh, earlier today. And I was like, oh, that would be really cool. So I wrote that down um, because I think that would be better because I started looking at it and I was like, so why? Because I just copied basically like what's in the dojo and or not dojo, Angular JS. I keep saying dojo. I'm sorry. Anyways, I copied what was there and um, it was just a checkbox for email notify. But then there's a whole field for phone notify. And I was like, that's kind of weird. Like, shouldn't it just no, like it obviously knows what the pre the patron's email is if I check this. Um, so why do I have to fill in the phone? I thought that was weird. So I would prefer if it would just like auto fill um, and I might be able to just steal that from the place hold um, screen elsewhere. Um, but I did write that down. So, um, so let's do, okay, let's just save this as is. Okay, all right, what did I just do? Oh, thank you. So it doesn't autofill in AngularJS. Thank you. Um, yeah, and I know you guys did the AngularJS, so I'm sorry. It's not in Dojo. <laughs> um, <clears throat> it's uh, in JS. So, okay. So it created this new one here. I can click on this and go to the patron if I want to see, you know, the patron. Um, it's got the title. It tells me if I place a hold, what it is, when I did it, their home library. Um, the status is new, so one of the things that I'm making more difficult for myself is um, like the underpinnings of how this status is decided. So I may have to like, basically there's a, right now what it's doing is like in the field mapper, if you know what the field mapper is, it's like calculating what it should be. It's like, if it meets this, then it's pending. If it does this, then it's new. Well, the problem with that is that means that like on the table for the request, there is no column for status. Like I can't do a report and say, show me the status of all of my new requests. And that was really annoying. I didn't like that. So, um, <clears throat> so basically it's now a column on the table for, page, uh, for user requests um, of status. And, but that means that I have to figure out, you know, when this happens, it needs to get this status and all that jazz. So, um, and Andrea says, calculated fields are also problematic for column filters. Oh, very good. Yay, good to know I'm on the right track. <clears throat> yeah, no, good on you for avoiding that because if you try to like use large data sets with calculated values on that, it blows up like filtering, so. Awesome, cool. <laughs> yeah, okay, good, good. Um, because I really wanted this to be more like, a lot, you could pull stuff out of reports. So I, that bugged me that I couldn't find the status column. So, all right, awesome, good to know. Um, Tiffany, yeah. can we note with status and others weigh in, but I think long-term, if we get the patron driven one, we want a different new status if it's created from, by a patron versus staff. Yes. So I was thinking of like another column, like not source, because that sounds kind of weird, but like something to that effect, mm -hmm. basically like, you know, um, you know, like how when patrons place, not, no, is it when you place a hold, it tells you if it was done through the OPAC or yeah, renewal? The, it'll, yeah, it'll tell you whether it's a staff or a patron hold. Yeah. And so same like with renewals. So yes, yeah, de definitely something like that, I think would be great. Okay, yeah, because that was my thought. So like if it's created in here, you know, it gets the value staff. If it's created in the OPAC, it gets, you know, like OPAC or whatever. So that way, yeah, you can tell like our patrons are doing this many or whatever, you know, pull it out in reports. Um, let's see, there's also, there's also user versus requester. Sometimes they're the same, like the patron and sometimes they're different like staff. That's true. Would that, would we want to um, record, would we want to record that? Do we want to record um, like the person who placed it? Yeah, you know, well, like, it's something that's recorded in holds now. Um, okay. So like, you know, you're placing a hold, a staff member placing a hold on behalf of a patron, like you are tracking both 
who placed the hold, which is the staff member, but who the hold is for. Mm -hmm. Whereas a patron logged in as themselves, those are both going to be the same. Um, just it's just another data point. Um, if you're going to, I mean, but we're sort of wandering off because again, that's only going to be relevant when this becomes a patron thing, which you have said is not your iteration right now. Yeah. Um, I think it would I'll, be helpful though to know, like, if especially if you know a staff member is putting in multiple requests and they're doing it wrong, you'd be able to identify. Like <laughs> yeah. I, 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 not to be like the, you know, the mean teacher or whatever, but I like when we have the ability to know who did something. So, um, yeah, I would, I would be down with that. Yeah, audit trails. <laughs> um, <clears throat> okay, anything, I don't remember what I was talking about, but anything about what I was just talking about before I move along. For, I know, again, it's, it's for future um, and I may have missed this, but for like the status, if it's seen on the patron side, will like new doesn't mean anything to me, but like, mm -hmm. will there be a different set for patrons where it's like new, like means it's been submitted or is in review or uh, we're ordering it or do you know what I mean? Like, are they going to yeah. be more? Okay. Uh, I don't know. That's a good question. Cause yeah, new doesn't mean anything. I have a similar like like wording problem with just pending because um even just like looking at this today I'm like what the heck did pending mean like I was like so um I had hang on I wrote down where, where did I write down my notes <laughs> hold on where did it go uh status oh okay <clears throat> so pending if I recall um because I just picked this up today after putting it down for six months so um pending if I recall means just attached to a line item so, and that's all. So is pending order, is that better? Is ready to order better? Um, should it have a different status if it's, I'm attached to a line item that's on a selection list, but not on a purchase order? Because if it's on a selection list, it's not really ready to order, right? Um, and we don't really use selection lists, so I can't really speak to, you know, what would be useful for that. But is pending good? You guys have? An opinion. Because the statuses are hard coded. Like there's no table for like statuses. So basically, you know, if I change one, I change it. So it's it's not a like customizable thing. Right now. Do you have a list of what the other possible statuses are, Tiffany? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> No, no, that's okay. Um, let's see. I think I have it at the bottom here. So it is okay. So I think there is new, pending, canceled, ordered, hold placed, ordered, hold not placed, received, and fulfilled. Yeah, pending is very vague. <laughs> yeah, that I thought it was. The other ones seem pretty clear, like it's ordered, it's received, it's in, well, and then it becomes in process when it goes to cataloging. Right. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so y'all y'all can mull that over. I'm not gonna put you on the spot or anything. Um, let's see. Where... But I, I do think too, I think it was Elizabeth's point um, that, long-term on the patron side we want a different set of statuses that display to them yeah okay, so let's see so for opac iteration can we Ooh. oh wait waiting i sorry i like the the idea in chat there from deborah awaiting yeah. order yeah um let's see okay so for a bleh. For OPAC iteration, can we have a different set of statuses and or just what they see? Like on the on the back end, it may be the exact same thing, but what they see is different. Um, or what they see looks different, more patron friendly. And it um, with the holds, it might make sense. Um, to like just have the status of 
ordered rather than hold placed, hold not placed, I think might be some of what Andrea's getting to in the chat because you have the yes, no place hold column and maybe there needs to be something to like catch when the hold, if the hold is supposed to be placed, if it fails. Mm, yeah. Whether like, I think whether that's part of the process that staff see or something that they can go back and check to see where holds failed. Because otherwise I would imagine the only way you'd be able to tell if the hold didn't get placed as it was expected is if you look at it while it's on order and the status says hold not placed, but the place hold column says yes. And if you don't happen to look at it at the right time, it might already be received or fulfilled. What if, what if there was another column for status about the hold? Like, you know, and so it wouldn't be populated unless the hold was placed. Yeah. I don't know, I'm making this stuff as I go along. Um, okay, so let me write this down real quick. Um, okay, so may not need this hold ordered hold that place if we do some damage control around if the hold fails for some reason. Yeah. Okay. And Andrea is just saying in the chat that might get complicated since one True. holds are hard and two <laughs> there have a bunch of other statuses of their own. I completely agree. True. Which is okay. why I kind of wonder if like there needs to be some spot where you're going through and doing the request where it pops up and says, we tried to place the hold, but we couldn't. When would that happen? Would that happen when I activate the purchase order? Well, when so does it place the hold? When you, I, I believe it's when you activate the purchase order. Cause then we create items. And I think it's when you do that because I think that's when it creates the hold. Yeah. Well, and if we had like, um, I don't know, like a count of like how many holds placed or something and it had like a holds not placed or something. I'm just thinking of uh, the batch import export, the way it tells you which ones imported and which yeah. ones errored out. Yeah. I'm Let's yeah. Uh, once the hold is placed, the patron request interface should only care if the hold succeeded or failed. Right. And this way it gets into that holds group thing where it was um like that's sort of a blunderbuss approach, like <laughs> override all, all hold locking conditions, because we found to like to do that live was hugely resource intensive. So, you know, hold groups kind of does does its best and says, yep, I placed, you know, most of these, but not all of them sort of thing. And it's just because once you start intersecting with the holds logic directly, like I say holds are hard flippantly, but like holds are hard, you guys. Like, yeah. <laughs> yep. I uh, like that once idea, you start though. intersecting with that, like you were going to find yourself in a huge development rabbit hole. And I know this yeah. from experience, which is why that. we've sometimes solved these problems with like the less ideal, but blunderbussy approach um, yeah so you just sort of have to kind of think about what you're trying to get out of this interface and how much actual end process detail you need mm -hmm. like or and what gets handed off you know so you said that's hold groups that it does that hold groups attempts to override all potential blocking conditions like but to place the hold but it won't necessarily do all of them um Obviously, there's some like patron does not exist anymore or whatever, or okay, um, things like that. But okay, well, and with that, Andrea, am I correct that if the hold gets placed, but it would never be filled because of the block that it overrode, it would then end up on the hopeless holds list? That is a really good question, and I don't know the answer. Because hopeless holds is looking at things Whether from or not an item perspective. So in theory, that hold is not hopeless. There are plenty of items that could fill it. It's that the patron is not, you know, 
But if it's like age hold protection or something that's blocking it, those can end up as hopeless holds because there's nothing that can ever fill that hold. Yeah. I, I honestly do not know off the top of my head, but this is what I'm getting at when I say like holds yeah. are hard. And Tiffany, you might want to like, for the sake of your own development, not touch stop it. <laughs> you get to that point because this is awesome and it would be great to see it. Um, and I don't want you to like, uh, you know, end up get in, stuck in a down the hole. Just mired in nothing. In nothing. Yeah. Yes. No, I, I don't really want to. <laughs> um, okay, good. Thank you. Um, Okay, let me, okay, so we have like 18 minutes. So let me show you the, the actual cool stuff that we don't have so far. Okay, so I created this uh, request, right? So, but like Mary was saying, like the workflow that I think a lot of us use is not that, well, now I'm gonna go like create a line item from this and put in all the stuff and link it to a bib, like we don't do that. Like we upload an order. So that means that we need to be able to link to a line item. So we have a bunch of stuff now that we didn't have before. Um, well, first of all, we have um, things like cancel requests, which if I do that, you'll see there's my, my list of like patron cancel reasons, um, but I'm not gonna cancel it right now. So then, so we have line item management now, and then um, I'm gonna ask you guys about this in a minute, because I tried to, um, break these up because some actions are you can only do on new and some it's okay if it's pending so that was kind of like my thought on dividing these but I don't I don't know how well that's sorted but I'm going to come back to that so all right so let's say um, this had a better title and author just than new title so if I do search for matching line item it kicks me down into the line item search and it will pre-populate the search fields with what it is. So like if I had an author, it would have like had another field down here for author and it would put in the title that I've already put in. So like all the information that's already been done, it will search by. There is nothing called new title. Um, so I'm just gonna put an A. <laughs> um, so if I go along and I find an existing new or pending line item, so um, I don't think something that's already ordered should be linked to a purchase request because like we were saying, the it's only placed or something only happens when we activate. So if it's already been activated, then that's, you shouldn't do that. You should just go into the catalog and place the hold. So if the line item is new or pending, you can click on it. And then now we have mark for patron requests. So the same way, like in bibs, you can mark for, you know, transfer or whatever. So we're going to mark. And then it kicks us back over here and you'll see line item number one is marked and comes up here. And then now I could do this one. I could link, let's just do both of these at the same time. And I can link requests to mark line item. So if I have 10 requests, all for the newest James Patterson, I can link them all to this one line item at one time. So if I do link, so this is the line item. Oh, I haven't, I haven't tested this today. Hopefully it works. Okay, so it tells me information about the line item just to make sure. So I selected, you know, all these James Pattersons and yes, confirmed, I am linking them to this. Um, and it lists also the patron requests that I'm gonna link. It's four and five. Um, I think uh, I have it also in here. It would tell me if, I couldn't link them. Like if it was some, if it was canceled and I accidentally had it selected, it would be like we're not we're not linking, you know, two or whatever. So it's like we're going to link four and five. Yes, we do. And so now, there they go. So now these two are linked up to line item number one. So, and then I can clear the marked line item, and it goes away. Uh, so the workflow like circling back around that seems to me I think would work is patron comes up to the desk and they say I want the Patterson that's coming out in June and I'm the circulation person and so I create a request and it's new in here and then the act person comes along and they're like oh dang I need to order 
uh, this new Patterson. So they put it in their cart on Ingram or whatever, and they upload it. They've got a purchase order already existing. Um, I also plan to put a menu item in the purchase order to where you can mark a line item like directly in the purchase order. You don't have to search for it. Um, and then they link it up. And then from there, there's nothing that needs done. It's linked up to the line item. So then once you order that order, the hold is placed, the status of the request changes as it goes along through the thing. Um, and yeah, so it closes the gap of you know the normal workflow we have where we upload things because now we can just search and find our stuff to link to. Does that make sense? Yeah, and that's okay. really cool. Okay. Good, I'm glad that makes sense. Okay. Um, what? Um, and if it's in um, if it's in new or pending status, then I can still link it up to a different line item ID. So like if I made a mistake, I'm not just like locked into line item ID now. I can go back and search again and change it to something else. It's only after the order is placed when I'm locked in. That's what I, you know, I can't, I can't change stuff from then on. Excuse me. Um, so does that help with the workflow, Mary? Do you think that's closer? And I am, I'm sorry, I'm calling you out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to wrap my head around how I'm going to train my libraries to do this because they can be very, a, B, C, now I've got to throw one A in the, in the uh -huh. middle of it. So, um, I mean, it's that insurmountable and it'd probably be the, the best and brightest to want to do this. So should be okay. <laughs> I mean, it also make more, might make more sense if you like actually get to touch it instead of me just bumbling mm. around and telling you <laughs> what it does. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, well, in another, like long-term piece that might, you know, maybe do the last bit would be to have something like what currently checks the catalog on the purchase mm -hmm. order and says you have multiple copies that would actually check the requests. Oh, that'd be nice. Yeah. Except how um, would the requests get there in the first place? Well, so the requests counted. are entered and then it like checks if there's a newer pending request based on ISBN or UPC or whatever has been selected in the line right. item. So if you've, if you've got CERC staff taking the request to begin with, I wouldn't put much hope that they're going to get the ISBN into it. <laughs> and the patrons even less. You know? Yeah, but as I was gonna say, that's, you know, a you know, I think between that, I think between the two pieces, you might be able mm -hmm. to cover most. Um, but I think this Tiffany is like what you've done so far is fantastic. Yeah, I think, yeah, we're, I think we're on the road. I might have to fold in another step for my act people to say, uh, check your list and, and supply ISBNs to the request. Can we edit the requests once they're uh, on this list? You can. So let's go. Okay. Um, okay. So here is, so here's one question. Mm -hmm. What should be editable? editable so like okay so i put edit request under new only so pending um mm -hmm. but the question is is like so my what? thought behind that was is like should i be able to change like the title if i've already you know linked it up to a a line item you know like if circ staff comes back and they're like oh that was wrong you know and they just change where it's so you know it's not really it's linked up to something mm. already, but maybe they're not analogous anymore. Um, maybe, maybe you need a unlink so okay. that like if they, because right now, I think if you link it to the wrong item or line item, you can link, you can change it and link it to another one. But if it turns out that you don't actually have a line item for it yet, I don't think you can just unlink it and put it back to like new. Yeah. Okay. Right. That's a good if idea. we can unreceive, I think we should be able to unlink. Okay. All right. That's a good idea. So just be like, that was wrong. <laughs> just yep. take it completely out. Okay. Should and then, 
then I think what you're saying with, you know, you can't edit it once it's linked makes sense. Okay. All like right. if you've already said it's attached to this line item, you shouldn't be able to change anything about the actual item because you've said that it is this thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. So, and there's also, and this may already exist. I don't remember in the current interface. There's also, there's edit request. Um, and then there's modify the hold info. So like edit request would be changing like anything. So including like the, the bibliographic information, but then right, modify adding. hold info mm -hmm. would just be, you know, Cora, the yeah, level. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like she doesn't change her phone number. Like I wrote her phone number down wrong or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, so those are kind of separated out. Um, I don't know if that makes sense to do that. Yeah, and because I think after it's, once the hold is placed, any modification should happen through the patron account. Right. Of yeah. the hold. Yeah. Um, and in general, am I correct in thinking that like once the hold is placed or like once this is ordered, there should be no modification of a request? Is that? It, it should be committed. Here? I would yeah. think agreed. it's committed. That yeah, agreed. Yeah. Okay. Okay. If the patron doesn't want it after all, they can cancel the hold. Yeah. Okay. Um, would, it, yeah. would it make sense to be able to duplicate requests so that if you have like six people asking for the same title, you don't have to type it all out? Yeah, I think that'd be good. I think like clone. Although, what would you clone? Would it would would the you... bibliographic info? Okay. Yeah. And then you put in the patrons info. That makes sense. To me. Yep. Okay. Yeah. That's good. Um, or so, maybe you link it with hold groups. Oh, that would be cool. So you could place a hold, like you could create a request for the hold group. Mm -hmm. That would be cool. And then Evergreen would place all the holds. Sorry, I feel like I'm taking us off on some tangents here. No, I like that though. So you would create a new hold group for the acquisitions request? Well, I think, you know, if you were buying the new James Patterson and you re you knew that everybody in that James Patterson hold group was going to want it, you put the request in so that when the purchase order is activated, everybody in your hold group has that hold placed as opposed to having to remember to go into the hold group and mm -hmm. do it may or may yeah. not work, make sense workflow but i feel like there's potential connections long term that could do cool things like maybe um if it was going to be for a whole group you could do user or <laughs> hold group and have a drop down list of whole groups yeah well, and I mean, if especially if people are using hold groups for things like book clubs, as opposed to particular authors. So if your book club comes in and says, we're going to be doing this one, can you order it for us? And we all want to be able to read it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We don't use hold groups very much yet. So I feel like there's potentially, you know, ways that people are using it out there that would make sense with this that I'm unaware of. I don't know. But again, I'm, I think not, this is I'm not on your familiar with hold groups. <laughs> I, I feel like this is on the would be cool in the future list. Yes. Yeah, I was gonna say that there's a lot of yes, would be great in the future. That that sounds yes. like an excellent I, future path for this. I am making um like a list of like what is an essential function, like that it needs mm -hmm. to go out the door with and what I can make uh, like a follow-up bug for. Cause like some things like archive completed requests that doesn't work right now, <laughs> like at all. <laughs> so, um, so that's an essential function. Yeah. Um, and then other things and like, because I'm like fixing the statuses, like, um, like right now, if I ordered these, it wouldn't change to ordered. <laughs> so, um, so some things are just not done, yeah. but um, mm -hmm. and that's like, it has to work. To go out the door but like some things i just am writing down and plan to open a bug for um, well and i think the unlink is probably one of the only bits that we've talked about in the last few minutes that i'd say would be essential mm -hmm. okay yeah i agree so especially if, if it 
you are coming along afterward and want to put the ISBN into it to look for potential linking to a line item, um, that's that's important to do. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Um, we have three minutes, so let me show you these last couple things. All right. So before, if I'm correct, I don't think you could add directly to a purchase order. So now you can. So now we can add request to a purchase order. So if I click it, I can either add it to one that already exists, like PO name, or on the fly, I can add a create a new PO. So like, let's just do this one. Um, let's add it to one. So add to an existing one. And it does this again. Mm. So it opens up brief record and it pre pops, populates all the bibliographic information you already entered. And then we just hit add record and there it lives. Um, and if I click requests, it kicks me back. And so now there it's linked to line item number nine. It's now status is now pending. Um, and then if we did where we created a new one, let's pick this person, blah, 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 blah. Um, oh, I didn't want it to. Did I break it? Okay, no, there it is. All right, so now add to PO and create a new purchase order, which definitely taking feedback on if this is okay or not, but let's let's create a new one. So then it pops us over to creating a purchase order. So it's gonna be for VR1, Road Art, and then same thing, it pre-pops with all the bibliographic information. And now we have a new purchase order and now we have a new line item, so. Would it make more sense for that pop-up to look more like the record bucket one? Where, you know, it pops up and you've got the shared bucket or the new existing shared tabs and you pick the tab and either create the, the bucket or um, it's when you're doing it through the catalog. Okay, let's see. Um, I, I don't remember record buckets. So you're going to have to direct me. <laughs> uh, yeah, so just uh, any any item. Okay, so let's do. Harry Potter. All right. And then if you go into it and under uh, other actions. Other actions. Add to bucket. bucket. Mm -hmm. okay. And see here we get the three options. It would only be two right. options, but you could have existing PO or new PO. And then if you click on new bucket, you can oh. see that it gives you more options. I just, that might be a easier interface. Okay. I think that, that makes sense because it it's already like people are already familiar with that interface. It, it, it'd be consistent. Mm -hmm. I okay. kind of disagree because I don't really like the use of tabs there, but I'm also not an end user, so I will defer to actual end users. I, I would rather have it be in one thing with a button. I'm channeling Stephanie here. Stephanie is beating my love of tabs out of me. <laughs> um, but. She's just, like, you, you will know. hate them by the end. Of, by the end, <laughs> <She's> not wrong. <laughs> if, um, if it's an accessibility issue, I'm happy to pull my suggestion. So how about how about this? So I don't know that I can do that. Like we're talking about just getting like mired down. So the reason that this works right now, hold on, let me go back. Oh, darn it. Blah blah blah. Oh, that's that's not going to work. That's not going to find a person. Um, okay. Um, blah, blah. Okay. So the reason that this works right now is this, I built this little like pop-up thing here, right? Yeah. But like this, um, create new PO, this is like literally just stealing and like, like routing you over mm -hmm. to something that we already have. So like, I didn't create anything. I'm just, I'm just told it if they hit this button, kick it over to see like you have kick it over to create PO and then it has all the the info here in the URL. So like building it like buckets would be new. So like mm -hmm. I could put that as like a wish list bug, but like as far as like like I said, like getting it out the door, um mm -hmm. this is probably easier to get out the door just because it, it builds on something that ACK already has. But I can always open it as a bug. I think 
where I'm kind of stalling, and I think maybe this is where you're at too, Tiffany, is that there's just something dis- like the way it sits on that um, pop up right weird. now. Yeah. yeah. Like, cause, and like, cause you've got, or I almost feel like you need select an existing purchase order with the add to purchase order button and then create purchase order with create new PO, like just, but again, like is dividing up those buttons going to cause accessibility issues? Um, yeah. I don't know what the solution is, but it's, it it's looks awkward. weird though. It's yeah, right? it looks weird. Yeah. Like, it, cause it's like this had this option has an associated drop down. This has a nothing. And yes. then we just go into button. So if you think about it from an accessibility perspective, you want text, then thing, then button. Mm-hmm. So then that would be select existing purchase order. There's your drop down. There's your add to purchase board order button. Then your text for create new order. Then your create new PO button. Okay. Then, then exit. Right. Like assuming that the tab order is great. But that would be, I mean, yeah. again, I'm not, I'm trying to learn from Stephanie, I swear. But um, it, it's, that's what you want to kind of think of in terms of, of that. Okay. Which I yeah, think is helpful. similar to what Jennifer was saying. Okay. But I actually, I actually like it in one thing. I think it's nice and elegant. That's, 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 I like that better than buckets. I would, okay. I would steal that for buckets. <laughs> Okay, and then um, selection lists work the same way. So add to selection list, same thing. See, this one looks better because it's Mm -hmm. words thing, words thing. So, um, but yeah, and it works the same way. I don't have any existing ones, but. But I think you'd also want to look at making these two match because here you have add to selection list, whereas technically based on the purchase order one, you should have a create selection list button. Oh, I see what you say. Yes. Yes. And I don't know, like, like maybe it is, at, you know, create new, but, but I guess, yeah, because the selection list, you just need the name to create it. Whereas the purchase order, you actually need to go through and add the additional stuff. Yeah. All right. Well, at least I'm on the right track that it looks weird. <laughs> <laughs> um let's see I don't think there's anything oh so we are over so I'm not going to hold you guys longer um but in general if is there I don't know if is there a better way of grouping these things um or or does having line item management linked together and then having I can do these things on new requests or I can do these things on newer pending is that good I don't I don't know I don't know what the best way to group those is that's logical I like when those things are grouped together in that way, because I think it makes it obvious which things you can and can't do at particular stages, but I'm also not an act end user, so. Um, And do we have the... um, Will this interface have the edit menu, actions menu option? I don't remember what. I was gonna say, if you go to the, the settings it, button on the function bar. It should, that's a, I yeah, think, yeah. Manage that's actions a, menu. Yeah, I would oh, say that's yeah. a stock EG2 grid thing now. Yeah. So like oh, if somebody okay. doesn't use selection list, they can remove all of the selection list related ones. There you go. So it no longer exists. Cool beans. Uh, one really quick question, Tiffany. Uh huh. The request date filter, even though it shows the time, will that just filter on particular dates? Um, I don't know, Andrea. Do you know? Uh, I'm just I, thinking I, if you're I, showing canceled requests, that could go back quite far, and you'd want to be able to filter on a particular time frame, probably. It looks like it's asking for date as opposed to date and time. Yeah, I think that's just a column display like modifier. Um, I don't believe that the filter has a way to filter by time. So it might just, 
Um, so yes, it should work that way. Obviously, also, like you do kind of want to see the time, like mm -hmm. in a hold context, because yeah. that matters. But like, if I don't think the existing column filter has time level granularity, but I could be wrong. Um, I also, so the one other bug that I want to tackle on this because I, I think it's worth it is that there's a bug for, um, this is uh, in the old interface, it's called clear completed requests. And you have to specifically select requests to make them clear. Um, this button, uh, what I would like is to archive them. So it will just say anything that's eligible, which would be anything with the status of fulfilled, would get an archive time. So I would add a new column onto the request. And anything that has an archive time would not show in this grid anymore. You would have to grab it through reports. Um, and also, I would uh, not right now because I'm trying to get you guys out here, but I would be interested. My thought was having another library setting of if canceled requests are older than X, they should also be grabbed and archived. And then that could be that could be set. So like for your library, if a canceled request is older than 30 days and we hit this button, it gets archived. So that's a, that's a that's a thought that I can leave you guys with. <laughs> I really um, like the idea of that because I can see, you know, over a number of years, your canceled request list growing very long without that. Yeah. Like it's one thing to show them, but like, I don't want to see like six months ago, you know. <laughs> I don't want to see five years ago. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I've, I've already yeah. got libraries wanting to archive their purchase orders. I tried to steer them toward using a uh, date range. Uh, if they ranges in their searches to not so they wouldn't see what they don't want to see but yeah. they they really angst about this gro that growing list <laughs> yeah um okay so i've held you guys that is i think i showed you everything i think um but this is what i have so far it's on my test server and i'll put this as i put a pull request on it on the bug purely uh it is not done um, but purely so that you guys could look at it. So I will leave it on my test server um, for Feedback Fest. So you are more than welcome to go in there and look at it. I also put, um, I have like a Google Doc um, with, is this it? No, that's my notes. Um, here it is. I have a Google Doc with things that are not done. This is, you can comment on this. Um, and I have like the beginnings of documentation down here and like, notes that you guys you know can tell me or whatever so if you want to look at it and you know tinker with it for feedback fest that would be awesome i i any feedback is good feedback so if it's not something that i think that i can do um to you know get it get it done then i will write it down and open a a, a bug for it when i actually submit my my real thing but i really appreciate any feedback that would be great so thank you for listening to me. I appreciate you guys. And I appreciate you hanging out for 10 extra minutes. This is great, Tiffany. Thank you. This is, I'm excited yeah. to see this. I appreciate seeing the progress you've made on this. Yeah. Thank you. And I can see that, you know, once you have it ready to go, this is something that we could try piloting with our libraries. I think you've got it to the point where we could try it. Yeah. Yeah. Which is okay. super exciting. Awesome. Very good. Yay. Very good. Um, okay. All right. Well, thank you so much, everyone. Um, yeah. So I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day and thank you so much. You guys are all really kind. So everybody have a good day. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you.